I think the, the the problem of cookies disappearing has kind of reduced the com- almost completely reduced the use of third party data in a cookie like third party cookies right no one was talking about third party cookies okay. interestingly what people are talking about now is the extent to which you're allowed to use first party data in your marketing so it's almost like gdpr is also coming back back to bite really now yeah right so if someone has opted out of marketing you're obviously not allowed to market to them but a lot of people a lot of uh businesses are still using um sort of legitimate interest or implied interest Mm -hmm. as the reason to market to their current customers to to use their first party data Mm -hmm. you know their sales data and what was really interesting was a point that hsbc made which they have their understanding or their legal understanding is that that's not a, that that isn't okay or mm-hmm. isn't definitely okay so they're yeah. obviously worried about that and that that means you have a much smaller set of data to work with right yeah if you can't target your own customers now the solutions to these sort of cookie problems i would say boil down into like three broad categories uh, the solution, sorry, that were discussed discussed a lot at, um, at Performance Marketing World. So, at the sort of most cookie like, <laughs> let's let's start with most cookie like. Um, you had something called like well server side tracking, yeah, which is basically generating cookies, but instead of generating them in the browser, so instead of first party cookies being generated in the browser when the user clicks on something. Yeah. You're detecting that event back at your website where your website's stored, right? On the server. Yeah, so, back, backdoor cookies. Yeah, so they, they're kind of backdoor cookies. The difference is like the infrastructure to associate that cookie back to a, 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 a customer is much more difficult, much more complicated. You pr- basically have to have like a specialist service to do that. And it's a very expensive service to f- set up, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to know what someone in your CRM has done on your website using server-side, there's quite a lot of infrastructure and processing that goes on in that gap. And thus, it's, yeah. it, is, it is quite expensive. Yeah. And therefore, it's not really accessible for a lot of businesses. Now, a version of that is conversion APIs. Okay. So these are provided by Facebook or Google. So Facebook's is called conversion API. Facebook's, uh, Google's is called, I think it's the Google Ads API slash conversion. Yeah. Um, so be, 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 people have started just calling it conversion API or CAPI for short, because marketers love acronyms. And what the conversion API does is it, 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 it tracks traffic on your website and then gives that, instead of back to you, it gives it directly to Google or Facebook. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a, 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 you can kind of think of it as like a short-lived cookie, but on yeah. the server side again, that can enhance your ad campaigns, but doesn't give the information back to you. And the way you support conversion APIs, you put your first party data into that. So you might connect it to your uh, CPM. Uh, yeah. I don't mean CPM, do I? No. Sorry, Harry. Um, As in Shopify or no, your CMS? Um, CMS. CMS. Yes. Yeah. 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 Your customer management systems, right? You can actually. Do you want to go back? Give them a nice, nice little. Um. So. Yeah. So so connect to your, to your customer management systems, your customer data systems. So you give your data to Facebook or Google. And what Facebook and Google do is use that to make your ads better, right? To target your ads because they they understand more about what people who click their ads then go to do on your site and how many of them become customers and things like that. Now, taking that step, that idea of giving your data to someone else and, and then them doing something with it one step further, we have data clean rooms, which came up quite a few times. Mm-hmm. So a data a data clean room is is taking that idea of you give your first party data to someone 
And then they give you some information back based on that. And what the beauty or the, the, the kind of the idea of the data clean room is instead of giving your data to a third party who does some analysis on it, you give your data to a clean room, other first party data, for example, like experience data comes into the clean room. It gets matched inside the algorithm and then you can do a segmentation, for example, and the results come out. So you get the results of the segmentation, but you've never seen any other first party data. Your first party data is not actually gone to anyone else. Uh, It's like this gray matching happens, but no, it's, it's not possible to kind of pick apart and get back your customer data from it. So you can get more general targeting information out of that rather yeah. than just for Google or just for Facebook. But you can't get sort of the customer matching stuff that we used to be able to do. A bit like a, 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 data, a data cocktail shaker. You, yes. you, one of the ingredients is your own data. There's loads of other ingredients that you're not sure about and you just get a nice drink out of the end, but you couldn't reverse engineer it.